Welcome to another video where we will be looking at the 18th topic in the JAM syllabus and that is local biomes and by the term local we are referring to Nigerian biomes. What does that mean? Those are the, the different ecological um, landmarks that you find in different parts of Nigeria or different ecological habitats that exist in different parts of Nigeria. Let's look at the JAM syllabus and what it requires of you when you are preparing for this exam. So a look at the JAM syllabus, local biomes or Nigerian biomes. You are expected to know the tropical rainforest. You are expected to know what the Guinea savanna is. You have the southern and the northern Guinea savanna. You also have the Sudan savanna. You have the desert, which unfortunately is not in Nigeria, or fortunately, and also you have the island of montane forest and grassland of the Obudu, the Jos, Mambila, Plato. Okay, specifically, the objective of the syllabus is that you should be able to locate biomes to regions, and also you should be able to apply the knowledge of the features of the listed local biomes in determining the characteristics of different regions of Nigeria. So what makes the North or Taraba State, for example, different from um, River State, for example? What makes um, Yobe State different from Cross River State? So you should be able to apply this knowledge of local biomes to determine the features of the listed biomes in different regions, right? of Nigeria. Now let's go back to our book, that's chapter 18 of um, Explicit Biology, which is a book for this JAM exam. Now it says, understand the following after reading this chapter, a mangrove swamp, a tropical rainforest. We mentioned a bit of all of this in the previous topic, talking about habitats, um, aquatic and terrestrial habitats. But in this um, topic, in this video, we'll, be now, we'll now be taking a closer and in-depth look of what we mentioned briefly in the last video. Now, for these, I will refer you to this diagram or this picture, and that will do justice to my explanation. So, in Nigeria, there are three distinct biomes, and that will be the mangrove swamp, you have the tropical rainforest, and the savanna. Now, let us assume we're traveling from, for example, from Port Harcourt, and we're going to Sokoto. Now, if you travel from Port Harcourt to Sokoto, we would have traverse different um would have traversed different biomes within Nigeria. For example, in Port Harcourt, you have the mangrove swamp. Then when you get to Benin, a do state, you'll be coming into the rainforest. Then again, if you travel up down to Kwara State, you will be in the Guinea savanna. And again, if you travel up again, you have found yourself by the time you get to Kano that you are in in the Sudan savanna, which is here. And remember, our destination is Sokoto. So by the time you get to Sokoto, you would have, you will be in Sudan savanna. If, for example, you are going to Yobe, Yobe State is somewhere here, Borneo and Yobe, then you will find yourself in the Sahel savanna. Interesting. So. Let's talk about the mangrove swamp quickly. In Nigeria, the mangrove swamp are found in delta regions of Lagos. You know what a delta is. The delta region of Lagos, you have a dual state, you have rivers here, you have cross river where you have Calabar. And of course, in delta state itself. So these coastal areas of the state are muddy and waterlogged. The climate is hot and wet throughout the year. The areas support forests of small evergreen broadleaf trees growing in shallow brackish water or muddy water. So that's what you get from here. Now, you should remember the states that would be hosting this particular biome. They include the mangrove swamp, you have Lagos, you have Edo, Rivers, Cross River, and Delta. And now the characteristics for this, um, for organisms that you find here. You have plant of mangrove swamp, which 
possess um, specialized breathing roots called pneumatophores. I showed you that in the last video, topic 17 of the jam syllabus. Now, you can have, for example, in white mangrove, they have the pneumatophores, which is a breathing root. And it grows, I mean, it grows into air above the water surface. And it has tiny openings called lenticels, which serves for gaseous exchange. That's the purpose of the, the breathing roots. Many of the plants that you find in mangrove vegetation, they also float on water surface. So because they can float, what makes them to float is because they have air spaces in their leaves, in their stem, in their roots. For example, you have water lettuce, water, um, um, the dock plant, dock weed. For example, this plant flows on water because they have air spaces. Also, you have many mangrove trees that have what you call the stilt root or the prop root. And these prop roots are for support, for example, in the red mangrove. Okay, what are the animals you'll find in the mangrove swamp? You'll find animals such as worms, earthworms, crab, frog, snake, insects, many fishes, including some species of tilapia, the mud skippers, which can move rapidly over wet mods. You also have birds such as vultures, the palm nut vultures. You have the heron birds. You have some mammals as well, such as bats. You'll find a lot of bats in the mangrove and also monkeys. Now, if you travel from any of these axes, if you go further up, you will come into the tropical rainforest. So in Nigeria, the tropical rainforest covers parts of rivers, part of rivers, part of cross rivers, Aquaibom, Imo, Abia, or Abia, sorry, Edo, Delta, Ogun, Undo, and Oyo State. All of these makes up the tropical rainforest. So you need to find a way to remember all these states. It's very, it's very key in the exam. So if you look at this map, all the states I mentioned are here. The, but they listed their capital. So Ogun is here, you have Oyo here, you have Ondo here, you have Edo here, you have Imo here. All right now, this is the old map of Nigeria. So you may not have Abia here. You might not also find Aquaibom because that that this used to be part of um cross rivers. All right, and also you will not find um Delta here. That used to be part of Bendel. Okay, so by then you should know that all of this region represents the the tropical rainforest in Nigeria. What are the characteristics? The forest is dense and contains tall trees, which branch at the top to form a canopy. Now this cut off light so that the forest interior has low light intensity, high humidity, and still air and damp floor. Most of the trees are broadleaf and evergreen. That means these leaves are green throughout the year and they can gradually drop and new ones replace the grown ones. So throughout the year you, you continue to see this similar condition. The trees have tall on branch stem which um, are supported by large buttress roots at the base. They also have thin bark and they have lower um, fruits. I mean they have the flower and they can form fruit. Another thing you should know, which is the characteristics of this um, tropical rainforest, is that they are rich in epiphytes. You have plants growing on other plants for support. They are not parasites. Okay, they are woody climbers. Uh, you also have um, vegetations on the forest floor, which is very sparse because there's not enough light that goes to the bottom. So you don't have smaller plants growing on the floor of uh, a tropical rainforest. They are all very massive um, tree plants. Okay, so only small plants such as liverwort, mosses, and ferns are found in the forest floor. Examples of plants you find will be um, obeche tree, those are big plants. You have the roko tree, the mahogany, the silk cotton tree, the teak plant, the afara um, plant. All of these have their different botanical name. Okay, so and also um, there's something about the, the nature of plants that you find. In this um, rainforest, in terms of their height, you can have upper story plants, the middle story, and the lower story. Okay, what is very key 
about the animals in the rainforest is that they are arboreal mammals. For example, monkeys, squirrels, you have the tree irax. These mammals have long limbs and tail that enable them to climb and jump from one tree to, to another. And these animals are also, they have, um, they include large forest beds, for example, like fruit pigeon, the ombu, parrot, the turacos. Bats are only, the, the, the only mammals, flying mammals you find there will be bats. They feed on fruits and insects. Their skin is modified to form wings, which connect to four and in limbs. There are several insects, including plant bugs, beetles, and caterpillars. Okay, that you'll find in this tropical rainforest. You also have big mammals, which move from one head to protect themselves from predators. And that includes predators you'll find will include apes. You have elephants in this tropical rainforest. So many invertebrates also live in the litter and upper soil layers to prevent desiccation, including earthworms and snail. Now that, so we have talked about the mangrove and then we have moved to talk about the rainforest. Then if you go further up now, you will see that we have the savanna. Now the savanna is divided into two. You have the, 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 the Guinea savanna and the, the Sahel savanna. And now the Guinea savanna is further divided into the South Guinea savanna and the North Guinea savanna. So, so um, most part of Nigeria outside the rainforest belt are covered by tropical savanna vegetation, which is divided into three zones. So you have the Guinea savanna, you have the, the Sudan savanna, and of course you have the Sahel savanna. All right, three. So for the Guinea savanna, that borders the rainforest belt. So you can see the Guinea savanna is above the tropical rainforest. In Nigeria, you, you'll find it in part of Kaduna. You'll find it in Benue. You'll find it in um, Kogi State. You'll find it in rivers. I mean, in Kwara State as well. Because this zone is moist, the grasses grow tall during the rainy season. The trees also occur quite close together, especially on the fringes of the rainforest. If you look at the, the Guinea savanna closer to the rainforest, the plants are taller. They, they still look very fresh, like, like they are in the rainforest. We have to continue to move further up to the Sudan savanna, which is this, and then to move to the Sahel savanna, it's a different arrangement. Take, for example, the Sudan savanna which you have here to the north of the, the Guinea savanna, it is drier than the Guinea savanna and it has shorter grasses. The few, they are fewer and they are also more scattered tree, unlike what you find in the, in the Guinea savanna. So what are the states that, that, that have this biome? Sokoto is one of them. You have Kano, you have part of Bornu, where you have Medjugorje here. You also have um, uh, Mina, or Adamawa State now, where you have Adamawa is here. You also have um, Bauchi, part of Bauchi here. And you have Niger State. And you also have part of Bornu forming the Sudan Savannah. If you move up, you have part of Boronu again, constituting the Sahel savanna, and part of Yobe state also constitute what you find here as the Sahel savanna. Now, the Sahel savanna borders the Sahara Desert. The grasses there are generally very short and in clumps, or what you call the two socks. The trees and shrubs are few and sparsely distributed. Bushfire is a major problem there during the dry season. When the grasses are burnt, the underground part will survive and it will grow again during the rainy season. So the Sahel occur around the Lake Chad Basin, which is somewhere up here. And the Sahel, it's around Yobe and Yobe, I mean, and then Bornu. 
What are the animals you find generally in the, in the savanna? Regardless, is Guinea, in Sahel, or Sudan, or Sudan or Sahel. So the savanna supports an abundance of herbivores. That's animals like the field of plants. It also have a lot of carnivores. For example, you have some insects such as termites, grasshopper. You have birds. You have rodents. You have antelopes. You have goats, cows, camel, elephant. These are very common in this biome. Some of them would graze on grass, and, and then some of them will also um, browse the, the top of trees. For example, the camel. So you also have the some animals, some carnivorous animals like the leopard, the lion, the tiger, the cheetah. All these are found in this savanna. They also have the scavengers, such as the vultures and hyena. You know their, their function is to help to clean up the remnants of animals that are killed by the carnivores. And finally, we have the deserts. Now, there is no, there is no desert in Nigeria. There is no desert in Nigeria. But the Sahel savanna, which is very narrow, that you can see here, they, they are gradually giving way outside the northern Nigerian border to the Sahel savanna. I mean, to the Sahara desert. So this part is very close to the Sahara Desert, which is the only desert in, in the West Africa. So what's the characteristics of a desert, for example? You have extreme temperature. It's either extremely too hot or extremely cold. So the temperature is very high. For example, it can be above 80 degrees Celsius. That's like you burning. And that's the temperature of the Sahara Desert, 80 degrees Celsius. It can also be very cold, below zero. For example, there is a, a desert called the Gobi Desert in China. So I haven't mentioned this. In terms of um, the tropical rainforest, you remember the state they are found? We mentioned where they are found initially. And the animals you will find there in the tropical rainforest, we mentioned you will find um, the snail, the squirrel, snake, monkeys, and there are specific characteristics that allow them to survive in those environments. Okay, so. We mentioned that the savanna could be divided into three in Nigeria. What are they? You have the, the Guinea savanna, the Sudan savanna, and the Sahel savanna. But for the, the Guinea savanna, it's further divided into the Southern Guinea savanna, which is made up of Niger state, Benue state, and Kwara state. Okay, what you find here will give you the the Southern Guinea Savannah. And mind you also, you have Enugu here. Enugu is also part of the, the Southern Guinea Savannah. Then you have the Northern Guinea Savannah, which would include Kano, Sokoto states here. So you can consider this um, Guinea Savannah to have the Southern and the northern guinea savanna the northern guinea savanna however could also make up the could also be referred to as the the sudan savanna why of course we know where the sahel is the sahel is here and it's only made up of borono and yobe okay let's consider some questions i haven't gone through this Local biomes, these are the things I was reading out. Question number one. This question says, in which of the following local biomes is Makodi, Kaduna, and Enugu located? I go back to this plant. I mean, I go back to this. Remember the question says, in which of these states, in which of the following local biome you'll find Makodi, Kaduna, and Enugu? You have Enugu here in the Guinea Savanna, Makodi as well, and also Kaduna as well. And all of this constitute what? The Guinea Savanna. So the right answer to this question is question, I mean, option C. The next question, it says the sequence of the biome in Nigeria from Port Harcourt to Damaturu. Damaturu is the capital of Yobe State, and Port Harcourt is the capital of River State. So if you're traveling from there to Yobe State, 
what is the biome going to look like? Traveling from Port Harcourt here, which is um, a freshwater swamp, and you're going to the Sahel savanna here. Now, this is a, another word for this um, our mangrove or swamp is the estuarine, right? So you're traveling from the estuarine, according to the question, down to the Sahel. So how do we eliminate? It must begin with estuarine, and we have two options beginning with estuarines. But it must end with Sahel savanna. Which option? This is also ending with Sahel savanna. Wow. So both of them started with estuarine, and both of them ended with Sahel savanna. But what is in between? If you move from estuarine, what are you going to move into? You move into the rainforest. If you move out of the rainforest, you are going up north in Nigeria. You will move into the Guinea savanna. Sorry, Guinea savanna. If you move further from Guinea savanna, you will move into the the Sudan savanna, and then you move to Sahel savanna. So the right answer to this question would be option A. Question number three: the correct sequence of biomes from northern to southern Nigeria is so. If you are going to southern, you are going to end with estuarine. So let's map all the options with this, that end with estuarine first. Only two. So our answer is between A and B. But which of them is the best answer? Okay, so moving from the north to the southern Nigeria. So it must start with Sahel and end with estuarine. So only this will satisfy our answer option. B. But then beyond that, how, after if you if you are coming to the south, if you if you move from Sahel, where are you going to find yourself next? You find yourself in Sudan savanna, you find yourself in Guinea savanna after that, and then you get to tropical rainforest, and then you get to estuarine. The right answer is B. Question number four: In a tropical rainforest, non-epiphytic ferns and fern allies or cause ars. Question four, non-epiphytes and fans are light or no, they, they leave this non-epiphytic fans and the fan allies, they live in shade that are created by canopy formed by the tall broad leaves trees. Remember that epiphyte can survive because they can grow on another plant. They are not parasites. But for non-epiphytic fans, and their friends, allies, I mentioned initially that they just stay in the shade created by canopy formed by tall, broad leaves, um, trees. Okay, the right answer to that is option option C. Question number five. Question number five. Epiphytes and climbers are mostly found in the rainforest without wasting time. Question number six. One of the following characteristics of plant in the Sudan savanna, sorry, in the savanna, is the possession of thin and smooth bark, possession of large tap roots, production of seedlings or mother plant, possession of thick, flaky, or flaky bark. Hmm. Question number six. Okay. The right answer to this question would be D. The possession of thick, flaky barks. And what's the reason for my answer? Savanna trees possess thick, fire resistant barks. In this higher plant, bark also possess thorns. So, this helps them to survive drought and fire. Question seven The, Guinea, the southern Guinea savanna differ from the northern Guinea savanna in that the southern Guinea savanna has, savanna has more rainfall. And tall trees compared to the northern Guinea savanna. So the right answer is C. Question number eight. Question number eight. Grasses are better adapted than trees in the savanna because of their possession of. Question number eight. So savanna grasses, they have underground stems or the rhizomes. That is helping them to tap to the root of soil properly. So you have this rhizome, which are underground stems. Question number nine. 
in Nigeria, the Guinea Savannah Belt borders the mangrove swamp and the Sahel rainforest and Sudan desert and Sudan savanna rainforest and desert. Of course, Guinea savanna is between the rainforest and the Sudan savanna. Look at this again. What is here is Guinea savanna is between what? The rainforest here and the Sudan savanna here. Go back to the question which of the which is the option between the rainforest and the Sudan savanna. Option B. Use the list of biome below to answer question 10 and 11. So you have one, two, three, four. One is desert, two, rainforest, three, southern Guinea savanna, four, northern Guinea savanna. So the first question, which is question number 10, it says, it says, a biome with a low annual rainfall, few scattered trees with dense layers of grasses is found in Kano and Katsina states. Is, now by saying Kano, they're giving out the answer. Kano is Sahel savanna, no doubt. Is that correct? Now, it's also, I told you Sahel savanna could also be seen as the Northern Guinea savanna. So, the answer to this question would be D. Question 11. A biome where there are many cacti and small mammals undergoing estivation for long period. That describes a desert, isn't it? The right answer is A. Question 12. Grasses recover quickly from bushfires in the savanna because we mentioned this. Why? They have what is called the perennating organ. These are organs that are possessed by plants that enable them to survive from one growing season to the next. For example, you have the bulb, the runner, the soccer, the comb. All of these can stay on the ground until the environment becomes favorable and then they start growing again. So, the right answer to this is A, question 12. Question number 13. In a population study using the transect method, a student is likely to record the highest number of species in A, the tropical rainforest, the Guinea savanna, B, C, a Sahel savanna, and D, an estuarine swamp. Which of them do you think has more diverse and more abundant number of species in terms of biome? Question number 13. It is the tropical rainforest. It has the greatest species diversity. So if you, the transect method is used to, I mean, the transect method is difficult to use in estuarine. You can't use it. It's also difficult to use in Guinea and Sahel savanna because of few plant species. So the right answer to this question is A. Question 14. Sokoto State is located in the, again, Sahel Savanna, that is C. Question number 15, the main purpose of establishing shelter belts in the Sahel region is to A, check desert encroachment, B, provide wood fuel, C, beautify the region, D, break, break the Amatan wind. Why do we create shelter belt in order to break the Amatan wind? Okay, question number 16. It says the adaptive features of plants to desert condition include thick bark, succulent stem, and sunken stomata, thin bark, succulent stem, and sunken stomata, thick bark, air float, and stem, on stems, and sunken stomata. D, air spaces in tissues, adventitious roots, and thick bark. Now, what's the priority for any desert plant? water conservation right so you are going to look at the options that will be suitable for water conservation you must have thick bark succulent stem and also sunken stomata a perfect description of this plant would be maybe aloe vera or the cactus the right answer is a question number 17 look at this ecological zone the temperature the rainfall one two three four look at the temperature 45 32 30 this and 15 and the annual rainfall in millimeter is also recorded here okay so which of the zone is likely to be a desert which of the zone the, the zone with the least amount of rainfall would make it to become um, a desert likely question number 
number 18 now, right? High relative humidity will be expected. High relative humidity will be expected. First, what is um what is relative humidity? That's the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. And it will be high when there is high rainfall and low temperature. And low, you know, when there is low rainfall and high temperature. So humidity would always um will always be be low, you know, when there is low rainfall. Okay, so if we go back to the question, it says high relative humidity is expected where you have high amount of rain, rainfall. So what do you expect? That will be two and three. Two and three. Okay. Two and three. Option A. Question 19. A state in Nigeria that is most likely susceptible to desert encroachment is that would be the Sahel. And which of them represent the Sahel? That is most prone to desert encroachment. Let's look again at the map. So you have Bono on the side, you have the lake um the chart. Outside this Nigeria map. Now let's go back to the question. Question number 19, right? So Castina State falls in the Sahel, some part of Castina, which is very susceptible to desert encroachment. The answer to that question would be B. Question 20, which is where we're going to stop this today. Okay. We're going to stop here. See you in the next video. If you have any question, put it in the comment and then like, subscribe, and share. I'll stop here today. 20 questions. In the next video, we'll look at topic 19 and the jumps levels. Bye.